Good Sunday morning. It is the Positively Petland Show. Ron in studio. Good morning, Ron. How are we doing? We are doing wonderful. Uh, I love dogs, and you have two beautiful little puppies in studio oh, with yeah. us. What uh, What are we going to be talking about today? We're going to do the Shetland Sheepdog as our breed of the week. Is that the right breed for you? We have one in the uh, studio right now, and we also have an American Eskimo in the studio, and they are hilariously fun. Uh, we They had races around the doing a track lap uh, a bunch of times, and I think they're starting to wear, wear themselves out. I they're, love dogs that smile, and, and this dog smiles. Yeah. That is just unique. The American Eskimo smiles and it exudes happiness. If you're looking for a puppy that just can't stop having fun, this is your dog. The whole day so far has been this guy wagging, loving, doing goofy things, looking at you, wanting to be interactive with you. Is a very, very wonderful dog. I love it when, they, when he just, is it a he? Both of them are ladies. Okay, so I love it when she just looks at you like, Come on, come on, let's do something. Let's yeah. go, come on, give yeah. me a little bit of love, a yeah. little bit of attention. So we're going to do uh, talk about the Sheltie. Is that the right breed for you? And then we're going to talk about potty training. You can treat, train an old dog or teach an old dog a new trick. But we're going to talk about it from both the puppy perspective and the adult. You can apply the same principle to both. So do you, I always ask at the store, hey, how often does your uh, dog have accidents in the house or anything? And what I'm trying to find out is, do you have accidents? And if you do, we have some help for you. Cheap, simple, wow, you're going to go, let, I got to do this now, uh, ways of handling that so that your dog doesn't have accidents. And then we're going to get into liver treats. Uh, we, we've been talking about treats and using them for training, and we're going to do the same today. Uh, but we're going to talk about just different kinds. Today is liver. Uh, have you tried liver with your dog? You're going to find they love the stuff. And we tried talking about it last week, and I shortchanged you. Yeah, you were kind of rude. Well, uh, we were off on a tangent, and so I wanted to make sure that we talked about the liver. Yeah, you were talking about yourself. I was. Oh. I am very self-centered like that, and uh, I need to make it more about you and the dog. <laughs> about the dog. That's all it needs to be. About the dogs. How about a, uh amazing pet story of the week? I hear you have a, what, a cat burglar or something? Something like that. It's time for the Amazing Pet Story of the Week. It is the Amazing Pet Story of the Week. No, it is a cat burglar. Despite their sometimes diabolical nature, cats usually won't steal anything inedible. That makes the spree of Dusty in San Mateo, Mateo County, California, all the more bizarre. Since 2007, uh, this little cat went around to all of his neighbors' houses and stole over 600 items. Wow. <laughs> 600. They were counting. More uh, more clothing than anything. The news reported a pre uh, 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 for stealing uh, entire ensembles instead of just, say, uh, one stray sock. The cat owners... Uh, owners had taken setting up lost and found boxes for owners of the stolen goods to give back to their neighbors, given that this apparently has allowed the cat to get away with it. Uh, th uh, thieves, the world, uh, the world over will soon be kicking themselves for not trying uh, that with any of the goods that they stole. So at least the neighbors got their stuff back. But this well, little... I didn't realize the cat was going into other people's houses. Yeah. So this is a cat burglar. This is a, as uh, as the pun continues. Yes, this is truly a cat oh, burglar. I this... thought the picture shows pizza, and I'm like thinking, oh, it's going to steal pizza, you know, like off the table or something. You know, and it might, uh, it might. But have this one pizza. went far beyond that. I like that. So a sock, a piece of clothing, is <laughs> showing up in your a house. towel, and just imagine all of this stuff showing up in your garage or yeah. wherever the cat was staying and then you know you have to give it back to your yeah, neighbor sorry <laughs> sorry my cat uh, is this yours stole uh things so that is the amazing pet story of the week hopefully uh hopefully none of your cats from petland will uh steal anything except oh there's no no guarantee on that except one. for the love of our hearts oh <laughs> sent somebody to the hospital yesterday wow seriously broken heart Oh, my Lord. Hook, line, and sinker. I feel like a giant walleye swimming up right to that one. I was like, really? You had an accident? Broken heart. Nice. I've been waiting 10 years to get that one out. <laughs> yeah. And you finally found somebody so gullible that, that, that would actually fall for it. And Jerry's my victim this morning. 
<laughs> nicely done. So um, we have these great dogs, and is it the right breed for you? And right. you're going to answer that question, or at least uh, help our listeners answer that question. I'm just going to make a suggestion here. Why don't I talk a little bit about the store? We can take sure. a break. Sure. And then come back and hit the Sheltie, not literally, but the topic, and then go into potty training and all that. So a little bit about Petland. We're over at the uh, Marketplace Mall, used to be known as the Sycamore Mall, uh, where that new Lucky's Market is in. If you haven't gone there, you got to try that place out. It's a very wonderful store. Very unique items is what I've found. It is. And then uh, we're across from the parking lot uh, from there. So just make a quick jaunt over. Check us out. We're, we've got a buy 10, get one free on all of our dog food. We have a lot of different variety in, in there. If you're learning to, hey, I'm not sure what to do on my nutrition. I'd like to change it up. Come talk with us and we'll talk through all the different kinds. Um, there are cheap ones. There are expensive ones and all that kind of stuff. But we'll tell you the benefits of all of them. And then they're on a buy 10, get one free, both cat and dog. Then... Hey, bring your dog with, or your cat with, or your furry friend with. We do $5 nail trims, no appointments necessary. For the dogs and cats, just bring your vaccination record in so that we can make sure everything's up to date. Uh, so those are really good reasons. And then the best reason of all to come into our store, come in and play. Uh, so many people, and if you haven't been in our store, uh, you're going to go, whoa, this is a party in here. Um, we love to play uh, and interact with you and have fun with the dog, the uh, kitten, the hamster, whatever it is that you're looking. The to bunny is right up near the front of the store. Yeah, we just got in. Finally, if you are, if you're a bunny person, you've known we've struggled for the last couple months with getting bunnies. Kind of a weather-related thing. Well, we don't have that issue right now. We have plenty of little bunnies come in, have some fun with them. Uh, they are going fast, but we've got somewhere around 15 of them right now. So I, I love taking my boys in there because they just, it's its a, its almost like a walking tour of all the great uh, pets and great, yeah. uh, uh, you know, creatures that are out there from birds to hamsters, gerbils, you know, it's just it, to the to the spiders and the reptiles on the backside, the fish. And I mean, if you don't want to see those, you don't have to go over there. No, you don't Do we have, have them to. all contained and all that. Soon? But it but it truly is yeah. a great place just to go in and check it all out. What's neat is, is we have specialized in those pets that are good with people because there are other pets that people will say, well, do you have, and the sugar glider is one, cutest little thing ever. If you've never seen a sugar glider. What is a sugar glider? Look, uh, picture a, a tiny squirrel okay. with kind of a wing kind of a thing that looks like it can fly and all that. Sugar glider. Wow. Uh, it glides. But as far as a pet goes, while it is great for some people, for most people, it's not a great pet. You have to hold it for eight hours a day minimum. Sugar glider owners will carry them around with them, and you don't even know it. They're in their pockets. Really? Uh, and that is to keep them social. If you don't do that, those tiny little things are Tasman Tasmanian devils, and they will shred your hands apart if they don't know you and are comfortable with you and all that. And so it's a lot of work for a little, little creature. Hey, the people that have them say it's worth it, but know that you have that commitment every single day. Do I, you know, go, you go to work, you got to bring the sugar glider with wow. or spend eight hours when you get home with that sugar. That glider. is a, that is, I've never heard that before. So, so what we specialize in are those pets that can kind of take care of themselves in a lot of ways, but they're also very social, trainable, uh, loving, cute, all that kind of stuff. So that's where you get the rabbits and the guinea pigs and the hamsters and all that kind of stuff. So it is the Positively Petland Show on 800 KXIC and KXIC.com. More with Ron right here. We'll be back in just a little bit. <clears throat> all right now segment two are you ready yeah and what do we go till um that one was just under 10 minutes so Can we do 30 was yeah it? let's do 30 is it 30 i don't need it, i get confused on that one. Oh, i look on here he and i think this ends up being 40 well because there's seven there's that we, break in there yeah. also and i don't think it's hard timed is it i don't even know what that means meaning that it has to be exactly per per a minute. No, no. So I don't even know how does all thirty sound fits. good to you. Sounds good to me. Okay. And then if we find that we have to expand it, we know that. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think thirty is probably pretty good because then it will get us. Yeah, or somewhere right around there. So we'll see. I'm not too worried about it. Let's do this. Let's do it. Oops. Were you just talking about that? What? 
where that came from because somebody a senator or somebody's got another phrase that's somebody's coining oh uh, it was in your news it was it was but somebody has just nevertheless she persisted that one yeah and i don't even know the background of that but it does sound an interesting comment or statement uh mitch mcconnell <laughs> shut uh elizabeth warren when she was arguing about i think it was jeff sessions or somebody becoming attorney general and he basically like said senator shut up mm. and then he said nevertheless she persisted even though that he told her not to talk anymore anyway politics politics i'm glad i'm not part of it no you're not all right here we go <laughs> It is the Positively Petland show right here on 800KXIC and KXIC.com. I'm Jerry Lawler, joined in studio by Ron, the owner of Petland in Iowa City. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. So we have been talking about, obviously, all of the great creatures and fun things that you have at Petland on the east side of Iowa City. But we are going to be talking about the right breed, possibly, for you in relation to dogs. Yes. So the breed of the week that we're going to review is the Shetland Sheepdog. So picture in your mind, a lot of people can, you know, Lassie, Collie, you know, that that is a Collie. Um, that is a larger version of the Shetland Sheepdog. So picture Lassie, but then shrink her down uh, so that she's a small one. And that's when you get into the Shetland Sheepdog. And we're going to go through the history of that. And we have one in studio. And I mentioned at the top of the show, the dog actually smiles at you. Yeah. She is just happy. And and if you're having a rough day or a rough morning or something like that, just take a look at this little puppy and you'll you'll smile as well. Yeah, we're recording this live on YouTube. If you wanted to see what these dogs look like on there, you can go to a Positively Petland and it'll pop up there. And we'll We'll lift these. If you can't see the little puppies running around, we'll lift them up so that you can see them. They're running around right now. So a little bit of the history, the earliest history of the Shetland Sheepdog or Sheltie is not well documented in the... Okay, so where does the dog um, originate from? I didn't know. Shelly she, uh, Sheepdog, uh, North Canada. <laughs> North <laughs> Canada. Um, I actually don't know... I just, I've never heard of this before. Australia? In the Shetland Islands. Oh, wait. Is that the uh, occupied by England British, type? British, possibly. Is that one of those? Or those Sheffield. Sheffield. There's, well, I think there's multiple islands. Probably. And all that. Okay, so we're talking about the Shetland Islands. That's where they came from. But uh, it's a fun history. So in the Shetland Islands of the late 19th century, there were small farm and family dogs who probably came from the combination of small spaniel type dogs, uh, Scandinavian spitz types and smaller sheep dogs from Scotland. So the breed was first described in 1844 and had such nicknames as the Lilliputian Collie, so the small Collie. I didn't know Lilliputian. Where do, where do you know the word Lilliputian from? You Real ask, quick. You ask me some really tough questions and just throw me out there. I've never heard that word before. Brady Bunch. All the right. Lilliputians were the Martians that came down. I think it was Peter or Bobby. I can't remember who. I think it was Peter that called them the Lilliputians. Slightly ahead of my time. I remember the episode. Never would, See, I, there. Never would I have guessed that the Lilliputians. So the, they were described as or nicknamed the Lilliputians or fairy dog, meaning a small dog. Uh, in the early 1900s, one Shotlander, James Loggy. Uh, decided that the native breed might be developed to be sold to summer visitors from the mainland uh, who were attracted to the small size and suggested resemblance to the already popular collie. So that's where we all come up with that. It, it's, it you know, looks like that small collie. So skipping forward a little bit. I was close, though. I had to look up where the Shetland Islands are, and it is way north of the UK and Scotland. So they are they are way north. You got the northern go the, going for the, you. The northern part of it. All right, so then coming to America, many of the Shelties imported to America. How did they get off the island? Well, they were just talking about it. The the Scotland was Scotland families were going to the islands must be a vacation thing. Okay. And they were buying them oh, like going, right. "Oh my yeah. gosh, these are so cute." 
regardless, I think America would have found him. We, we love to find things. Um, so many of the Shelties imported to America in the 1920s and 30s had collie crosses uh, very close up in their pedigrees. So they were still putting them with collies even back then, making it difficult for breeders to stabilize uh, the size, although that is now less of a problem. So a little background on what they're talking about there. Realize that every purebred today was a mixed breed of the past. In fact, some of the breeds get mixed back into, uh, the purebreds get mixed back into the mixes of the past to bring some qualities back out again in that purebred. Um, people will talk about, oh, I don't want a purebred because they're overbred. That would be false. That's a that's not a true statement uh, because breeders actually really pay attention to how they breed. We though interpret some of the things they do as inbreeding. While it might be inbreeding to a human and it wouldn't work if we did that kind of a thing, animals inbreed all the time. Just think about in the wild. Um, they have their pack. There's a lot of inbreeding going on in that. And that is just something that happens with wild animals and dogs in this case. So, <clears throat> so uh, this one was uh, bred to a collie. Now notice that, hey, a collie is bigger. So you're, they were having problems with size. You don't have that anymore because they've stopped doing that. And you're going to now, as a purebred, get a more consistent breed, consistent size, consistent colors, all that kind of a thing. So that's why we like purebreds. Kind of know what we're going to get ourselves into, both in the personality and the appearance-wise. So, so that's uh, going on. During, the, during and since World War II, American breeders have imported very few English Shelties. And due to differing emphasis is... Is, is, is in the country, Shelties here are now somewhat different in appearance, although they still recognizably are the same breed. Uh, today, they are top ranked as obedience and agility competitors. So I love that was a really nice rich history of the Sheltie. A little bit about form and function. The Sheltie uh, was used to drive the small sheep into enclosures when needed and also to drive them out of the residence's veg vegetable gardens and to protect the young lambs from birds of prey by barking and leaping. The Sheltie today is still an active, athletic, healthy, and intelligent breed, easy to train and devoted to the family. Uh, two little more points. As, as is common with other herding breeds, Shelties like to chase moving things, including cars and other motor vehicles, so watch out for that. Shelties enjoy and excel in many events, including obedience, agility, herding, and tracking, as well as therapy work. So it's a really, it's a nice little package. Um, I don't have, they're not quoting me weights here, but you're talking about a 15 to 20 pound kind of range. It's not a tiny dog, but it is definitely a smaller dog. It is a shedding dog <laughs> as you brushed as away. <laughs> as I'm brushing myself. <clears throat> uh, so know that you're getting yourself into that. But realize, let's say you had a golden retriever or a Great Dane, a Great Dane that actually has short fur. How was the shedding on your Great Dane? Was it noticeable? N not, not, not entirely i guess uh if she you got saw up, yeah if she got up on the couch or the chair or something like that you okay. might see a little bit but you generally not that much because you know so the your great dane had two things going on one is is a short fur which like even if a, a dog dog is shedding but has short fur you don't notice it anywhere mm -hmm. near as much like a golden has that longer hair you see that everywhere um with a sheltie what ha what it has going for it while it is a shedding and it has a longer hair it is a small dog, so you're not going to uh, see it as much as some a uh, larger dog. Um, I also, you know, you can do grooming and stuff because I personally would not let the Sheltie hair, and this is personal preference, it's not anything uh, more than that, um, grow too long. I would have it groomed shorter, and I believe that just is a beautiful dog. In fact, Jerry, just here, this is, you only can see the back end of this dog. This dog right here, while it's a merle color, that's a groomed version. And you can see the hair just goes really long mm -hmm. over here, but shorter on there. And, and you're going to then help with the shedding aspect as well. It's shorter hair, so it's not going to be as noticeable. Um, 
I love the fact that it's an agility type dog, and we are seeing that agility in our station right now. They're going to wear out the carpet running around this place. Yeah, when uh, when this studio was built is when we started uh, recording, and we've been wearing this place out. Cats have crawled <laughs> the walls, everything. We've this this is a very cat and uh, dog friendly studio. It is. They're having fun. <laughs> So, so the Sheltie, smaller dog, um, there's some energy there. So if you like to go running, it's going to go for not a really long run, no endurance running, maybe a, a mile or two, I think you're going to get. Um, and then, so good in energy that way, but you can also get that energy out in the yard. Um, you almost can get the energy all out in your house. So there's a lot of dogs that like small dogs, we like them because they're indoor dogs. They get all their exercise out in the house. My dachshund and my little Maltese poodle, oh, my dachshund is just muscle bound because she exercises. She doesn't get out. She doesn't want to go out. I saw somebody walking there. Uh, it was a it was a smaller dog, probably just you know five pounds, something like that, uh, over at Terry Trueblood. And it's one of those things where it's like sometimes owners don't realize that those dogs are just not equipped and built for that long of a, a walk long yeah. of a walk and and the dog the dog looked like it was sort of maybe suffering a little bit and I, I just wanted to pick it up and be like i'll carry you the rest of the two miles around but uh oh my dogs are it's are, good to know it's good to know what your dog's limits are oh and, yeah and yeah. what they what they prefer i think most times the dog will tell you and my dogs tell me immediately they sit okay so when we're walking and they've done it uh like Callie's a dachshund miniature dachshund one block into the walk sits yeah i'm done and like won't move and you're like uh and she knows that we're gonna now pick her yeah. up and so that's what she's, she's got you trained she <laughs> has a strain isn't it isn't that interesting we'll talk more and more over time about how dogs train us if we're not training them they're training us and a lot of people that say i'm really irritated with this dog what that's telling me is is that that dog is training them trying to train them to do something whether it's through barking jumping whatever it is um all you got to do is turn the table at that point and go take control of it and now your dog's gonna get what they want get the attention you're gonna be happier about it uh and all that uh, uh, uh for instance was uh Mal our maltese poodle susie which i call our trouble child at home she's seven years old now she <laughs> barked incessantly at, at uh, the age of six months she found her voice she was quiet all up until then i mean she oh beautiful wonderful i was loving it six months our kids like taunted her or something <laughs> and then started barking and i started i'm like i don't like Susie anymore i just don't like this it's just barking all the time when we figured out how to get her to she still barks some like when the door opens and all that kind of stuff, or when she's really, really overly excited, she'll start barking. But that's okay. I'm okay with the occasional barking. Dogs bark. I get it. But the incessant barking, yeah. holy cow. And when she's, when we finally got her to stop, I went, I love this dog now. Yeah. And that's what I want to bring out to people is, is like, we're going to talk about potty training here. When you get them to figure out that and what to do and all that, and you communicate well and all that kind of stuff, you're going to love that dog even more. And that's what we're all about. We are talking with Ron from the Positively Petland show, Petland on the east side of Iowa City over by Lucky's Market. Um, and we're talking about, you know, the uh, Shetland breed and whether it's right for you. Uh, but uh, just featuring, yeah, you, can, uh, on, you can't see it at home, but if you log on to YouTube, you can see the uh, recorded ver version. Uh, Ron is holding the puppy up to the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to the camera that we've been playing like, with this morning. Like, what are you doing? It, you, it's a little camera shy. Like, uh, I want to get down and play. I want to see my little friend down there. Running. I want to do something else. One of the great things that I uh, have always loved about Petland is the uh, uh, the ten and one dog food. Oh yes, uh, ten and one. I like it. <laughs> ten and one. Uh, and it's like a football game. You would always look forward to the. I would always look forward to that eleventh bag that was free, and I would get the uh, fifty pound bags of Yukonuba every month. And uh, so that's always one nice thing, a little perk that uh, uh, that you get from Petland. Um, but uh, do you offer training classes or? Yeah, we do. do you get we do a lot of one on ones. Uh, or that sounds like a basketball term. <laughs> um, and so come on in, and it's it's a it's really easy over time to deal with one issue at a time if you come in and it's a train wreck 
I, I usually just ask, what's the worst thing? What do we want to start on first? And then just focus in on that and and how we can communicate with your dog and all that. You got a question though. Is that obedience training or is or is it yeah. more just you're trying to tackle that one issue? Because I know I, I, Greta, my my great Dane, when she, you know she was a puppy, uh, uh, we went through an agil agility class. You know, just yes. kind of. Training the dog and and uh, picking up those cues. Uh, do you offer anything like that, or is it yes. the one on one more just kind of one on one? And then on Sundays we have ten thirty training. That's basic obedience. And when uh, that obedience is a general term, mm -hmm. uh, what are you trying to do? Potty training? Are you trying uh, having barking issues, biting issues, uh, walking issues? You know, all of that would fall under that. Okay. And so we do that on. We have an organized class on ten thirty. That's free. To everyone and you can uh, just show up head right over to Petland right now because this is going to air on right. Sunday morning and so uh, you have plenty of time Grab, to go, go get the dog go get the dog and head over to Petland <laughs> just stand out front front of the door we are not open quite yet uh, at that point and then uh, but we know we have that class and so we'll come out greet you and uh, come in and go through some basic o obedience training we actually ask at the front at the beginning of that course what is it that you'd like to cover today because we don't want to go through all this other stuff to only find out you didn't even want to hear that so we'll go through that kind of a thing um, and then we have uh, for all the puppies that go home from our store they get access to a trainer on online 800 number DVDs uh, there's all sorts of uh, ways of learning, and I always say, how do you learn? Are you the one that likes to watch videos? Are you the one that needs that one-on-one -on -one type treatment? No, I like the classroom because I like to hear what other people's, you know, I, I want to know that I'm not the only one, um, and then learn what they're learning. You know, so there's all different ways that we'll help you learn uh, to train your dog. We're going to teach you, and that's really how training works, is we teach the person how to train, and then you take it from there. Once you start getting it, though, it's like you start talking their language. You're like, oh, I get it. And so, it's that repetition and just staying consistent, right? Uh, a lot of it. Repetition and consistency are the, just like school for kids, are the key things to training a dog. Because with anything, one of the th key things that you got to understand is, is the first time you do whatever it is, you're trying to get them to do it, and you're, I got an incentive for them, and I'm communicating in a positive way. The first time you do it, they go, cool, that was really good. I got a treat, or I got a scratch. I love this. You know, Doesn't know why. The fifth time you've done it, you're, now you're going to be consistent uh, on it, but the frequency is just starting to build up. So the fifth time, it's like going, hey, uh, you did it again. That was kind of, you know, why are you doing it again? And then the 10th time, 20th time, then they start going, wait, when I poop outside in the grass, I get a treat. But when I do it in the house, I don't. I'm going to hold it now and I'm going to wait till I go out there. And uh, we've talked uh, in last episodes, the when you give that treat is so critical. You got to give it to them when they're doing what they what you want them to do. If you want them to bark. Give them a treat when they're barking and be consistent and frequent about it. And you're going to have a barking dog. Oh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so just apply that strategy. Although there are some people out there that, oh, there definitely is. Uh, yeah. that love that barking dog because of security or they just like loud noises. Right. Yes. <laughs> I had a, uh, a counselor. She, she uh, was full-time nurse at the hospital uh, in the pediatric. She worked at our store as therapy she was really good employee and she had Yorkies at home, yipey dogs. Well, she trained them to be yipey for sure. She then got a Shih Tzu and I'm, and I go, Oh, well, I bet you the Shih Tzu doesn't bark. And she smiled at me and she goes, I trained it to bark. It barks really well. Wow. And I went, Oh, you like that. I, you're one of the few out there. So, uh, she actually liked it. Um, uh, she's now transferred. I think she's in Texas. Last time I heard she got transferred to a hospital down there, but, um, so you can train them to do all sorts of things. So let's talk about potty training here. There's four, four tools that we want to talk about for potty training. And this is, you can use this with your old dog or new puppy. Uh, either way, it's a little easier on the puppy side of things. Although if you're fine tuning your dog, only has an accident once a week, once a month, that's obviously an easy situation uh, after you listen to this show um, to figure out and fix. So the first tool to get every single time is the kennel. If you're strapped on cash, go get the kennel. That is your most important tool. 
for those people that right now are saying, oh, I don't, those are cages. I'm not going to buy the cage. I don't like that cage thing. Don't look at it as a cage. Where do we put babies? In a crib. So a crib can be construed as a cage because it's got the up and down slats and all that kind of stuff. This just has a top on it. So that uh, kennel is used for potty training really simply and basically um, as a way to simulate what they know in the wild. It's a den. It's a small, tiny den, cramped. Uh, there's even a movable wall in it. And so you're going to shrink that up, let the dog go in there so that they can just turn around, lay down, and that's it. If they can poop and pee in one section, come into another section, it doesn't work. So they're going to... Um, you're going to tighten that down, and I do mean tight, for potty training purposes. When Susie, my trouble child, she actually, we had to go back and forth. You, you know, sometimes you got you go reverse. And she showed us that, you know what, I'm going to potty outside. I'm all good with it. And then we put a really nice bed in there. She showed us that if you pee underneath the really nice bed, you don't feel it on the top. <laughs> so she would rich it up. You've got to be go kidding. underneath. Poodles are extremely smart, and yep. she had half of that in her, or has, and um, and then would lay on top. And I go, oh, Susie, wow, always testing boundaries. Susie took the bed away. She had to go for three months without a bed, and she even knew what was happening as we were pulling it away. She's like, mm. you know, did one of how, those. How dare you? Oh no, she was like, come on, no. Yeah. But we had to show her. You had to communicate with her that you know this is the way it works. The next morning, she was even still trying to test that boundary. She peed. But she was like, well, wait, I'm not laying in this. So she was literally bridging it with her front and back <laughs> paws. She had her front paws up on the side of the kennel and her back paws on the other side of the puddle. And she, you could, as you were coming up, I was chuckling. She was like going, um, there's an accident in here yeah. and you better clean it up now. You yeah. know, it was one of those things. And you're like, holy cow. I had a standard poodle when I was a, a yes. kid growing up. And they <laughs> are highly, highly intelligent. Uh, and they they figure things out. I just remember him when, when he was growing up that I could, I could see him doing something like that. Right. And so they are like we, another training thing that I uh, bring out is, you know, the quick learners learn quick, but they forget fast too. Us slow learners, once we get it figured out. You're a slow learner too, aren't you? Oh, and we retain it. Yeah. Then. So you don't want to train us a bad habit because then we retain it. <laughs> uh, Callie, our dachshund, once we got her, it took her forever to figure out the potty training. But once she did it, holy cow. She went from only peeing and pooing in the house, never outside the house when we got her at a year and a half. Now her record is, you know, it's, you have those oopses where you didn't get home in time. Yep. We were at 13 hours, which we were shocked. We recently, unfortunately, bumped it up to 15 hours without having an accident in the house. Okay. That's, I can't even go for 15 hours. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, and I just remember the dogs that I've had over the years. We've been really fortunate. Um, we must, we must have been doing something right because I don't remember a ton of accidents. Of course, they happen. You have a dog, they're going to happen inside the house. It's just the way that it is. But I remember with the majority of our dogs that when they wanted to go, they would just put their nose straight into the back door and say, hey, you need to let me out because we never had doggy doors or anything like that. With you. But they would walk... Uh, Almost all my dogs, Cocker Spaniel, uh, Rat Terrier, uh, Miniature Poodle, and then uh, my latest dog, Greta, a Great Dane, they all did the same thing. Yeah. Nose straight to the door. Yeah. It's time. It's time to go. Oh, when we walk in the door, hey, where's Callie? Her nose will be to the door. Really? She just sits there and her nose is to the door. Mm -hmm. And it, you can kind of hear her say, uh, let me out now. now. Right now. Just do it. Please yep. don't even give me a, uh, a hello. I just want to go out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yes, they will start training you. Ours also will run a gallop towards us and then gallop away. Okay. And that's sure, their, oh, sure. their, so they were training us and that was a good thing. We liked what they were doing. So we immediately let them out frequency and consistently. Yep. And now they all do that. Both of them do that. They run towards us and run away. Oh, you need to go outside, go outside business. So the kennel, there's a lot more to that kennel and training and all that, but we're going to skip to the next product and go a little quicker. All right, this one is a stain and odor remover with an enzyme in it. This is, and there's a lot of different manufacturers out there on this. Nature's Miracle has one. Uh, gosh, we even have our own Petland brand version of it and everything. Um, it is a very basic product. They all work the same. They all do exactly the same thing. This product is uh, 
to combat the smell that a dog gets uh, in the carpeting or outside that gives them the permission to pee. How did it get there? They urinated. Um, is it a special urine they let out? Nope. Every single time a dog or a cat urinates, they have now left a mark there that gives them the, the permission to pee. So let's say you had a dog that was really good, really well potty trained. Uh, maybe you had a surgery done on, on your dog and maybe it was a little, you know, still under anesthesia drug kind of stuff. It had an accident. Now it has a permission to pee there again. You got to clean that up. And there are customers right now going, that happened and my dog keeps on peeing in the same spot. That's that permission to pee smell. So use the stain and odor remover with an enzyme in it, and that product will take the permission to pee smell out. Chlorine doesn't work. Soaps don't work. I'm trying to think of all those detergents we use. None of those works. you got to have the enzyme product that is made for that purpose. It works like magic. Um, you got to put enough on there so it seeps all the way down into the padding, into the wood, whatever it is. I always let it soak for about 20 minutes and then blot it up with a towel. It'll bring up the stain, but it'll also bring up the odor that they get, uh, that they can smell that says, hey, I can pee here again. My cat. And when you Have you ever used anything like this? Um, I to tell you the truth, I don't think we ever used anything with the enzyme, which is probably why if there was a spot, it seemed like she would always kind of hone in on that. Yeah. So this is another thing that we find in our store. You've had how many dogs? In my lifetime? Yeah. Oh, gosh. A uh, lot. Oh, well over a dozen, maybe 15. Holy cow. I hadn't. I didn't think it was that, I mean, that big. Uh, at one point, we had four dogs in the house. Oh, okay. I so, didn't put that together. All right. Yeah. yeah. So there were, there were multiple dogs, you know, all at the... Same that time. is what we find in our store. About 50% of the customers, 50% uh, of those customers that have dogs don't know that the product like this mm -hmm. exists. And this has been out for 40 years. Because there was probably a wives tale. I mean, I'm just going back that it, use vinegar or use vinegar and baking soda and or use those, baking soda. And, and they don't work. And it's like, okay, so uh, seeing a product like this that actually has been developed with the enzyme totally makes sense. Right. And it's cheap. It's, this isn't, you know, you're not saving any money by using the vinegar because you had to buy the vinegar. Right. Too. <laughs> so, so know that there's such a product out there. <clears throat> it works magic uh, when you use it. And like, let's say you had a problem for a month or two months or a year or whatever. Use this product. If you have a really, you know, once they get one permission to pee, sometimes they start propagating out further over time. You then are going to have to go get the rug doctor kind of pro uh, cleaner. And then you're going to put this product in neat like full strength and do it. I've even uh, suggested people pre-treat, let it sit, now come back with it in the reservoir uh, neat, uh, and then go through it again and, and get that stuff out. Sure. So that it gets that permission to pee out. Now, the next one is the opposite of that product. This is a bottle mm -hmm. in a spray that is kind of like urine, permission to pee, in a bottle. It's not urine. It's actually something that they, you know, it's probably an ammonia-type product. Mm -hmm. um, and so you spray this out in the yard where you want them to urinate and all that kind of thing. And now they go, oh, yeah, I can pee here. And they're going to pee there. So that gets them going in the right direction. So that's a nice tool to have. And then finally, and here, you know what? I brought a different kind of treat. Little Gimme's is one of our hugely our top seller in our store, they're, they're training treats. Uh, really delicious. The dogs love them. And when you give them to them, they're going to go, how can I get another one of those? <laughs> the look on the dog's yeah. face. It is cute. Run bag is it's just, like, okay. It's hilarious. Um, but you can use other treats, obviously, for that as well. And in fact, I think Little Gimme's has a liver taste in it. So the liver, so now we're going to move on to our treat of the week, uh, is... Uh, we have different products in the store where you can diversify that treat that they're eating uh, and getting and realize that you don't have to ha feed them a meal. This just needs to be a taste, literally a taste. Um, in this case, Tucker's Wagarounds is what we have. We've brought into the store. We're just seeing how people like them. So this is beef, liver, and bacon. Uh, and so what dog won't like that? You know, gosh, put bacon in it on top of it. Bacon. And so, the, and this is real bacon. This isn't 
any artificial flavor kind of a thing. And so there, you use this, you can break them up and all that kind of a thing. So you give them little treats as they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, some of the stats on this, uh, protein, 20%, fat, 12%. Uh, if you look at your dog food, your, both of those values are going to be even higher. Um, but this is getting pretty high up there to a good nutritious product. Fiber, 2%. Uh, calories, I don't even know how to, oh, here it is, 2,720 kilocalories. That's amazing. That's a very dense product in that if this is 2,720 kilo, uh, kilocalories per, per kilogram, your food is anywhere from 150 to 400-ish. Wow. So this is a really nutritious treat on top of all of that. So really attractive to them. So when you're using this for potty training, get it right to their nose, right when they're potting where you want them to potty. You literally can have them potty in a corner of the yard. So you get them to go outside so that they know, okay, I'm going to hold it until I get outside. You don't have to do this for the life of the dog. You can then start taking it away. We'll now bring it back and say, I only want you to urinate in that back corner where I won't notice the staining and all that kind of stuff going on or, or i only can only have to pick the poop up in that little area give them the treat when they do it in that area mm -hmm. and now you've got a really well-trained potty trained dog and that is liver and we squeaked it in and that is your treat of the week that you can find at petland, petland. east side iowa city over by lucky's market uh anything else to wrap up the uh, positively petland Just, show we're open at noon today closed at 6 p.m so we got six hours of operation day head on over have some fun time playing in that store um and then uh what is it S monday through saturday we're open from 10 a.m until 9 p.m so you open today at noon, but uh, did you say at 10.30 you have the training class? Is that 10.30 this morning we have open to you. You can come without your dog. That's okay. So let's say, you, hey, we don't have it, but we want to you know, be in on it. You still will learn the, the, the techniques. It's always just fun to have your dog there so that we can help you with that. So 10.30 this morning, head over to pos or, <laughs> Positively Petland. Head over to Petland for the dog training, otherwise open at noon, correct? Yes. Okay. It has been the Positively Petland show right here on 800 KXIC. We will see you, Ron, back here next week. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Iowa City's news and sports station. 800 KXIC and KXIC.com. Have a great day.